good afternoon, everyone. I am Shruti, the president of Alumni Relations Cell, Shamaji College. And we welcome you all to the webinar series with Mr. Vipin Vijay Nair. Alumni Relations Cell aims to build a mutually beneficial environment between the former students and the current students. It is the culmination of the vision of our honorable principal, Dr. Shiv Kumar Sehde, our convener, Dr. Darshan Pandey, and our beloved founders, Nishtha Sethi and Vaibhav Sena. Today, we have with us Mr. Vipin Vijay Nair. He is an alumnus of Shivaji College and has done his, and has done his BBA from Shivaji College. He has done his master's in Delhi and from, in Delhi uh, in, from criminology, sorry, from LNJN National Institute of Criminology and Forensic Sciences, GGSIPU. He is currently working as a lecturer and in service doctoral scholar at Jindal Institute of Behavioral Sciences, OP Jindal Global University. Today, he will be deliberating on the topic, identifying and inhibiting online embezzlement. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Shruti. And uh, I think we have close to 25, 26 participants and I hope there will be more joining in. So first of all, I would like to thank the Alumni Association who's working to uh, help the pass outs of Shivaji College interact with the current batch. And again, I would want to point out my inclination with economic offense and financial crime started uh, from my course itself with the Bachelor's of Business Economics when I started to know what exactly financial market is, what exactly uh, economic offenses are. And then I took it forward in terms of my passion. And now um, for past seven years, I'm working in this field and I'm happy that I can share some insight and maybe some of it would be new to you. Some of it would be that you might have heard from one or the other documentary that you would be watching because currently we have ample um, documentaries and web series which are coming up in terms of different kind of financial frauds. So today um, I would like to talk about first various kind of online fraud, especially bank fraud, uh, because a lot of uh, the digital fraud or the cyber fraud that happens are directed towards the bank fraud that we deal with. So talking about credit card fraud, talking about bank fraud uh, and ATM fraud, these would be the three things that I would want to uh, focus upon in today's uh, discussion. And I would want all of you to also participate and in terms of questions that I would ask or in terms of certain experience that I would like to share. And I have a small uh, PowerPoint presentation, which I would not want to go in detail with, but want to interact more in terms of how you have faced any kind of fraud or so. So first, uh, I would like to inquire from all of you, and I believe all of you would be familiar how to use Zoom. So for a question that I will ask, I'll just request you if you can raise your hand and just showcase if you agree or not. So how many of you have either been a victim of cyber fraud or know some or the other individual, maybe family or friend, who have been a victim of cyber fraud or uh, ATM fraud or debit card or credit card fraud. You can raise your hand if you have so that I will know in case you know a person, may it be your family member or your friend or you yourself have been a victim of uh, ATM card, debit card fraud, credit card fraud or cyber fraud. So I could see uh, quite a number of people who have been. I'll just request any of you, um, again, I'll just take names, maybe Ayush can just unmute himself and share what exactly was the fraud if he can share. Ayush, would you like to unmute yourself? Okay, I think you might not. Okay, let me just give you the right. Now I think you can unmute yourself. Ayush, not sure. Okay, maybe someone else, let me just try. Um, Mehek, can you unmute yourself? 
and share if you want. Can they unmute themselves? I'm not sure. I'm trying to ask them to unmute. Yes, okay. sir, they can. Unmute. I think, um, yes. Uh, Mehak, would you like to go ahead and just share certain details? Okay. Maybe Kumud. Kumud hey, hi. Uh, hand. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi. Please go ahead, Kumud. Yeah. So uh, the fraud that happened uh, with me, I mean, it, it, uh, it, I had received a call. The fraud did not happen, but uh, I received a okay. call where I was asked by someone representing uh, as uh, calling from the bank and asking, seeking details of my credit card. And uh, what they had yeah. asked for was uh, the date of expiry, my full name on the card, the date of expiry, and the last four digits of the card. And that is when I uh, understood that this could be something which is uh, linked to the fraud. And then I started inquiring with them as to why would they need these uh, things and if they are, uh, which, uh, how, uh, what is the kind of upgradation that they want for, for my card. Uh, and then they disconnected the call. I called up the bank. Uh, it was for uh, for uh, for a uh, it was a card from a PSU bank. So I called up the bank, told them the uh, told them of the situation, and they uh, asked me to block the request uh, to send in a request for the for blocking the card because uh, this is the kind of request which uh, no one from the bank would be seeking. And so yes, yeah. I uh, it was an attempt. Uh, it seemed uh, very uh, so for me. It seemed at that time very innocuous because. They were not asking for uh, uh, for the CVV uh, details, which seems to be the only thing that matters. But yeah. uh, they were only asking for uh, the expiry date and the last four credit card, which at times you think it may not be a very sensitive detail to share. Yeah. But apparently it was, and it was. I was. Uh, I mean, it was an attempted uh, fraud that did not occur. So that's my personal experience. Yeah. Thank you, Kumud. And uh, uh, that is majorly a phishing. Uh, attack which uh, you experienced, which again, it was not a successful attempt for sure. So we'll also talk about phishing, what exactly it is and how it is being done. And it is not only by emails, uh, which we usually think that uh, we'll get a email and there will be a link and we have to go to a particular website and then only there'll be some of the other information which is asked. But now the variant has developed. There are customization which is happening. We'll talk about phishing, wishing and smishing. So these are three different types of fraud that are uh, usually functioning and based on the lockdown that has happened, these kind of fraud has increased. And I'll share with you certain modern day or I will say latest development in this fraudulent activity in uh, this particular series. So thank you, Kumud. And I will be happy if uh, anyone would have their experience, they can type it in the chat box and uh, we can then surely take it ahead from that particular bit. So I'm happy to know there were like around six to seven uh, individual who actually had an experience or maybe have heard about one of the other individuals who have gone through these kind of fraud. So first of all, we need to know about what exactly are the various kind of ATM fraud, debit card fraud, credit card fraud, and also bank fraud, which would be there. So in my lecture today, I'll go towards each one of it so that you can be aware what all are there in the market and how can you prevent yourself? And there can be some of the other tips that you might know, know based on your experience, based on your knowledge from the net. But there'll be some that I'll share with my personal experience working in this particular field. So I'll just share my uh, screen. If you just give me a moment. Okay. So I believe Can you view my screen? I'm not sure. Just give me a moment. Okay, I don't think it is going. Let me just share it from my laptop. Okay. I hope all of you would be able to view my screen. I'll just go to 
Yeah. So when we talk about identifying, it talks about what all is actually there in terms of the online fraud or online embezzlement. When we talk about embezzlement, I would focus on embezzlement as a term where any property, any item, even if it's cash, even if it's value of a cash, it belongs to somebody else and you are trying to own it or trying to control it without the consent of that individual. And these are majorly happening when you either go for identity theft where you are not the person who own that property. You're not the person who has the right of that property, but because of identity theft, I'm not talking about stealing. I'm not talking about identity theft and then pursuing it forward. So one has to be very clear. What is the difference between identity theft? You go for stealing or any kind of uh, theft per se. So the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of the online fraud, online embezzlement, cyber fraud, that there are n number of online banking fraud that we need to be very careful about. I'll talk about uh, the fraud that Kumud mentioned and I'll be happy if others can also share uh, their input. And if you have any comment to make, then I will request you to uh, raise your hand and I will request you then to uh, unmute yourself or else you can put your questions, your comments, your experience in the chat box. So the first thing is Hawk's email. So what happens with Hawk's email? I believe, um, and I will ask the question again, how many of you did receive or have heard about receiving an email that you have won a lottery of let's say 10 million or whatever amount that you will think about? How many of you have heard about this? You can raise your hand if you have heard about um, or you have received a email of this particular bit that you have won one uh, uh, million rupees or 10 million rupees, or you have hit a jackpot and all of that. I can see four students raising hand or four participants raising hand. So I believe all uh, would be the ones who might have heard or might have uh, seen some of the other individual who have received that email. So this particular email, I'll share with you how exactly they go for commit crime. So they would want to send out an email and state that, okay, you have actually won a 1 million rupees lottery, but in order to avail that, you have to fill in certain details. And not always it would be a, a, a lottery email or a jackpot email. A lot of time you will receive an email stating it is from your bank. As Kumud mentioned that he got a call from a representative of a particular bank. Similarly, you will get a mail that will be impersonizing an ICICI bank or SBI bank or whatever bank you might have information of. And they would then want to seek financial details from you. So that is a Hawks email. And I will share with you how to identify such emails in terms of uh, what all could be the various factors or elements that will help you identify if it's a fake email or if it is a genuine email. So we'll talk about it in a while. Second is computer viruses. Always and always I do tell my students also and uh, the clients also, this is one of the key elements that we always and always forget. Never and ever open an attachment from an unknown source. If you do not know that uh, what the recipient is, who the recipient is, or what kind of attachment it would be, never open an attachment because that can be a virus, that can be a software which can be spying onto it because there are a number of software which has now come up, which will install a spyware in your system and that can access your microphone, uh, your um, camera and other files which are available. So never open attachment until unless you are well aware that you have an antivirus software, you have other kind of uh, uh, software which can curtail or reduce the chance of infection. As I mentioned, spyware, spyware can also be infused upon through attachment or certain kind of external device which is being put upon. And what happened in terms of spyware is there are two different modes what can happen. One would be that they will try to uh, gain access of your camera, gain access of your 
uh, computer in terms of uh, browser history, your files, your microphone, and then they will try to access all those details and then blackmail you. I had one of the case when where one of my client who was a teenager and the mother of the child came in and stated that this is one that they have received a mail which state that they have uh, gained access of your microphone, your camera, your browser history, and they will try to blackmail, stating that you have visited certain pornography website and he uh, have or he or she, because we don't know if it was a male or a female, <coughs> they have captured their intimate movements. And if they would not pay them in bitcoins, they will release the video on the internet. So um, the few suggestions that I've given, uh, try to reboot the system. Try to uh, see if you have a valid antivirus software. Try to see which all are the different third-party software which has been infused upon, which, ha which has gained access of your microphone, gained access of your camera, and see if there are certain devices which are alien or certain software which are alien to your network. So all of these are certain tips that can be looked upon if you are afraid or if you fear that there can be some or the other software which are infused upon. So that, are, that was one of my suggestions which was given because it was not clear that if the spyware of the software is installed into it. We uh, went across and showed it to the IT. There was no trace of it, but just as a precautionary measure, all of that was being told. And this case was six months old. And till now, he, uh, she hasn't received another email out of it. So a lot of time, it is the fear that we have. And we panic and we start doing certain kind of action which might be beneficial for the uh, fraudster or the scamster. So always try to maintain calm. If you cannot, then I will suggest go to a person who is uh, who could be a cyber crime intervention officer. So I'm a certified cyber crime intervention officer or anyone who is more expert in that particular uh, area. So that is one thing that I will always suggest any individual. I'll just see there are a few... Uh, chat messages. I'll just uh, read on to it so that if uh, it could be working or so. Uh, Dave has mentioned, yes, sir, I have got a call from this and they asked from number on the scheme. Uh, again, I'll also talk about this bit also, lottery and notorious Nigerian general window. Yes, uh, Kumud, you're absolutely correct. Usually these kind of mails come from African uh, origin, even though they may not be actually from the continent itself. There are a lot of techniques like VPN, which is utilized, which can redirect your network to one or the other country. So there can be individuals who are working from Delhi itself, but it is projecting as a Nigerian network, which is there. I've received a message. Uh, they say that uh, they will directly credit it to my account. So yes, uh, as uh, Vidhi have also mentioned, they trick you stating that, that they might credit directly. So please give out your details because we will want to send out the money money directly to your account. So these are techniques which they utilize and always and always you should be careful what you are sharing with uh, such individuals. Um, scenario, but to recharge his phone. Okay, um, uh, not an issue, Mahek. Um, instance which happened with one of my relative, I don't know what the whole scenario was, but the recharge is phone via Paytm. He found the recharge was not successful, then called somewhere or some message he received next minute, he got know that has been. Yes, I will share with uh, you the exact thing. This is called a smishing. And this is the latest pattern in terms of deduction of any kind of uh, amount from your account. And during lockdown, it has picked up. So I'll request anyone who would want to know the scenario Mehek has mentioned in the chat box. So you can just read out that message. I will talk about it in a while. Uh, second, um, the fourth kind of banking fraud which happens. And I believe uh, uh, all of you might be on LinkedIn. How many of you are on LinkedIn? Can you just raise your hand? Just want to see the number of participants who are on LinkedIn. How many of you are on LinkedIn? We have like 34 participants. Let's see how many of you think that LinkedIn is a good opportunity to network and you have account on LinkedIn. So my question is how many of you have account on LinkedIn? So I could see nine participants who have raised their hand, now 10. Okay, I'll just wait for a couple of more seconds to see how many uh, students do or participants do raise their hand. Okay, it is increasing now. I'll just repeat my question one more time. How many of you have uh, a LinkedIn account? You can raise your hand. If by chance you cannot raise your hand, you can also type it in the chat box. 
that yes, I have an account. So I can see around 50% of the students who have pointed out that they have an account on LinkedIn. So I'll share with you one example or one case which was highlighted through one of my colleague uh, on LinkedIn. So what happened was, and it is actually an internet job scam or employment scam, which is there. So a person who has written on the, uh, on his, or whatever you call on LinkedIn, that he is a job recruiter or HR recruiter of, he mentioned few uh, recruiter, reputed companies that he has worked with. And he posted a status that there is a vacancy in XYZ company, I will not name the company. And there's a vacancy and all the individual who would want to uh, apply for interview, they would have to pay a nominal fees in order to seek the serious candidate only for the interviews. So he's, uh, he approached and sought 100 rupees each from every candidate. And because of the lockdown, I, I understand that a lot of individuals have lost their job and they were very keen and eager to fetch job at one or the other end. So this individual, maybe he would have got application from 100 people, 1000 people, not sure what it is. So he given information that you have to transfer amount this and by uh, one hour or within two hours or so, you will receive a link of your date of your interview with whichever company it is and a link also where you would want to uh, inquire and he gave that if you want to have any other question you can send an email to the id that was given no contact number no website where the job can be looked upon just a image one of my colleague who is also a fellow cybercrime intervention officer he messaged him and he tried to get more information that what is the surety that we'll get a job interview what if that you are trying to just mint money and gain 100 rupees from each and every candidate and i think uh, he also shared screenshot of the message uh, the messaging linkedin messages and shared that this is a scam which is being put across and nobody should fall for it and i believe we would want to network with people we would want to gain information but these are few things that you should be very cautious about we should not let the scamsters come out with a vicious circle where we can fall prey for. This is one thing that I want to share. And this is also a kind of banking fraud where they will charge you a token amount and will say that he will get you job or will get you one or the other um, opportunity. And once you pay the amount, it will surely be no response or maybe the number is blocked, the number is switched off. Same thing happens with matrimonial site also. A lot of time you are asked to pay an amount and you don't even know the person and they will try to give you information that okay we are searching and searching and nothing would happen at one or the other end so these are few things which one needs to be very cautious about the next one which i uh, believe usually happen is in terms of identity theft i'll also talk about identity theft in debit card fraud a little while uh, later uh, what exactly is identity theft Identity theft is any individual who act as an imposter, which means that they act on your behalf and they're impersonating you without your consent or without your knowledge. This can happen through hacking. This can also happen when they have certain credentials, maybe financial credential or personal credentials of your, and they access a number of other uh, information in one or the other way. So these are a few things that one needs to be very careful about in terms of identity theft. And I'll share with you how you can evade or uh, get better off in terms of the identity theft when it happens. Um, now, I'll share with you four major type of banking fraud which are prevalent in today's time. When you talk about phishing, Again, I'll request all of you to lower your hand because I will just want to know uh, exact number and other individuals who would have actually faced it. So my question is, how many of you have seen the documentary or a web series which was on Netflix, Jamtara? How many of you have seen the Netflix web series, Jamtara? You can raise your hand if you have seen it was a very popular, I think it came in 2020, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, early 2020. How many of you have seen it? Okay, I've just 
I could just see three students who have seen it. So I will personally recommend if you want to know about phishing scam and how, how the entire network work, you can surely see some episodes of Jamtara, which is on Netflix. I'll tell you how it works in terms of phishing. Phishing usually is that you will get an email and they will try to impersonate themselves as coming from a bank. And they'll say that uh, your card is getting to expire or we are um, reconfiguring our KYC database and you need to enter certain details. And you may not go in detail saying that what, where exactly the mail has come from. Maybe in terms of IC, ICII, there's an extra I in the uh, email or the recipient uh, or the sender who has sent the particular email and we might ignore it. We might not see the minuscule I which is extra and we might click on to the link or the URL shared with them and we might just go forward and enter our details and then we will surely be a victim of online banking fraud. There are different techniques which are utilized for phishing. I'll just share with you one or the other. Um, how many of you have uh, at once visited songs.pk website or any illegitimate downloading website, torrent and other things? You can raise your hand. How many of you have visited? You can raise your hand if you have visited such kind of websites. Okay, I can see close to around six to seven students who have raised. Okay, uh, again, I would not uh, go ahead and say that you shouldn't visit such site or not, but I'll just give you a bit of caution there that even in such sites, there is a phishing network, which is called flashing. F-L-A-S-H-I-N-G, flashing. What happens in flashing is you will get a flash messages and I'm sure all of you would have uh, seen it when you visit such kind of illegitimate sites or so. What happens is you visited that site and you get a pop-up message that download this or antivirus software or anything or any other message that could come in and you click on okay on that particular message and there will be number of triggers that will be happening and those are flash messages that are trying to corrupt your system or corrupt the network that you are in and there can also be a possibility if you click onto it it will download a, uh, a software or any kind of um, uh, spyware which will be there and then there's a possibility that your system might get corrupt. So always be cautious that phishing is not only through email, it can happen through a uh, act as a genuine website, but actually it is a, a fake or it is a window message which is being pointed upon. So these are a few things which I will state that one needs to be very cautious about see the uh, actual URL and I will share the tips with you, which will help you be better off. And uh, surely I would be happy if it would help you uh, protect yourself from any kind of online fraud or so. So one is phishing. Second one is wishing. Wishing is voice phishing, which means that, and I'll share with you an actual case which has happened in terms of uh, the wishing uh, uh, fraud, which happened in Bangalore. So in the Bangalore electronic city, there was a pamphlet which was distributed for pizza delivery or pizza services, which was required. So usually bachelors and all, they are very uh, eager if they, and also people who go to office, they don't quick and they want to get something from uh, a takeaway or from any other uh, shop, which is nearby. So in wishing what would happen is you will get a, uh, number or telephone number that you have to call and there will be automated teller machine behind that call. There will not be any individual who would be there and they will be taking an order or service that they will be providing and you would be then asked to share your details which would be taking care of the order. So what happened in the Bangalore case, the bachelor called the pizza house which actually was a wishing fraud which was happening. Everything was taken by the auto uh, uh, automated teller uh, machine which was there and at that point uh, they asked for a payment mode and they said that they are not going for uh, a COD mode they are only uh, taking care prepaid orders that you have to pay and they were asking that there is only card payment method which would happen so they started asking the uh, 
card number they started asking expiry date and they said that you can as an option you can save your card and you can share the cvv number and they said that uh, the call is not to ask for ottp otp uh, that would come on your mobile but there will be a welcome code that would be generated and you have to share it that will come from your bank so i agree that it was a mistake that was done by the bachelor again we can also be careless on that note because of the hunger or be being very uh, um, eager to get the order delivered he shared the otp thinking it was a welcome code and as uh, i think mehak also mentioned that there was a particular uh, fraud in her relative so what happened here is that there was a 25000 rupees deduction which happened with that particular individual so that is one thing that i will say that is very um, uh, carelessness that has happened from his part but we can also be very cautious that never share any uh, card detail or financial details or financial cred credentials through voicemail or any kind of phone call the third one the third variant is smishing which is sms based phishing that you will receive a link on your sms or any kind of code on your sms that you are asked to go to that url and then access certain services or product and then you'll have to pay for certain uh, through certain payment mode or payment mechanism and one would be fraud or defrauded on that particular mode so these are few ways that i will say always and always be very careful in terms of phishing scam and one needs to be very cautious about such kind of measures i could see one raised hand i'm not sure if uh, shreyans want to ask some question or was it some uh, thing else i think it was from earlier uh, question thank you shreyans let me just see if there are any chat messages which is there okay um, sir i got a message from a woman on instagram about the same and she said she want to donate some money around 50 million for her. yes you again uh, not just instagram you will get mails from individual again on facebook there will be messages and these are spam messages which comes up and it is not actual uh, end and again I, i which i always tell my students and also my clients about this that if you get any information never believe in it on the go which again is true for any fake news or any uh, fake information which is being generated that we should not be part of fake news and what we should do is that you should always go to the source of that information and see if it is genuine or not if let's say as uh, uh, ma have mentioned that the women was talking about donation ask her what actually is the charity show me the website of it and you'll see it if actually you want to donate because there can be chance that the person genuinely want to seek information so see each and every detail and then only go forward and donate or commit anything never on the first go believe any information people may call you anything people may call you that you are so logical you are so uh, realist that you don't want to believe anything but it is true in this age you shouldn't believe anything up front go to the source and see if it is actually genuine or there is actually a fraud because being in a digital age we actually cannot believe if it is true or not um i have visited songs.pk yes thank you vidhi so again as amy has mentioned you are asked all of it and i believe if it would have been a fraudulent a um, message she may not uh, be able to answer all the question and she might have then uh, either retracted herself to respond or she might have even blocked you for that particular bit so i'll be happy to know what actually happened you can drop it in the chat box thank you ama for highlighting that uh, personal information or experience the last one is eavesdropping a lot of time when you talk about spying when we talk about a certain kind of eavesdropping that can happen so always and always see if you are accessing your financial details through your mobile through your laptop even when you go to atm never let anyone eavesdrop your information and also when you are using financial credentials financial documents and when you are entering financial details never used public wifi never and never use public wifi because there has been number of cases where public wifi can inflict certain kind of malware and subsequently it can take information out of your uh, device so that's one thing that i as a tip i will share that never 
use a public wi uh, wi-fi for sharing any kind of financial details financial document or entering any kind of financial uh, information the last few months there has been string of medical charity calls mails social media ads running in all claiming rare disease how do you differentiate between the genuine and the fraud okay thank you uh, kumuth for asking that um, uh most of the time people prefer online shopping uh, there are so many sites how do you reliable source thank you uh, vidhi and kumuth for asking how do we know that it is a reliable source or not so i'll share with you in detail and in general information how you can track a genuine website genuine information or genuine details of anything may it be medical charity may it be online shopping or anything firstly and i believe if you are on a, a particular uh, uh, browser or so always and always see that you will have a lock sign it is a t http secure sign which is there if you have a lock sign in the website it it's it is a secure website that you are going on so always see if it is a url that you are visiting there there will be a lock sign in the starting of the url and it shows that it's a secure website there is no external uh, malware or virus which is embedded in that particular network that is one thing which you when you are going to any uh, url second thing if you are receiving a mail if you are receiving a let's say letter head which says that we belong to this particular organization or let's say you are going to a website where you could see if it's a genuine or not first thing and i'm i'm sure i will again ask a question how many of you were aware recently there was a, a whatsapp messages which was rolled out for women's day stating that they are distributing free uh, shoes or free footwear how many of you are aware of it recently this was a scam which came into picture you can raise your hand if you are aware or you can also type it in the chat box oh okay so i can see a lot of uh, students or participants raising their hand and also type it in, type it in the chat box so thank you all i believe there are uh, 8 to 10 students who have raised so that was a fake um, i will say fake message which was rolled out and fake uh, scam uh which was being done about and i'll tell you how now based on that particular if you still have that message you can corroborate the information that i'm giving you which will help you out in order to understand how to distinguish between a fake and a genuine so first of all if there is a message that you are receiving or any kind of email or any kind of um, uh, letter or any pdf or anything that you are receiving firstly check the contact detail what is the contact detail what is the email address what is exactly the information in terms of contact address which is there if let's say and again i will say let's say the uh, message that was rolled out for women's day was of adidas the link when you go into it was not the actual adidas link which is usually adidas.in or adidas.com something of that sort but that was not the original link which was there it was something else and the spelling of adidas was also wrong it was adibas which was there a lot of time we confuse d and b and we don't get into the detail to know about it so first thing is check the logo trademark or whatever the uh, genuine uh, mark of that particular company is and try to validate it with the original if it is not from the original website try to see all the logos and everything and also see the url if it is from a original site or so if it's a subset of the site or if it's a link routing from the site check that check the logo which is there and third is contact address why i am saying contact address a lot of time they will just change one or the other alphabet and when you put that address in the uh, google you may not find the address which is there i have helped my client decipher such kind of fraud by just the contact address of that particular website or that particular uh, url which is there because this uh, a lot of time they will try to maneuver the entire website alike with the original website but because they don't want to get uh, or attract any kind of legal case they will not put the same contact address as the genuine website so that is how you can detect any other 
any other information or any other website which is false, which is fake, or which is maneuvered in one or the other way. So that's one thing which I will say that one can go forward with. Let me just see if there are any other questions or any other. I think uh, this would answer Kumud and Vidhi's question. And again, uh, Kumud and Vidhi, if you have further questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions. Uh, Vivek has mentioned, can we use uh, CM Delhi Wi-Fi also? Okay. Again, uh, if I have to point out any government source Wi-Fi, which is again an open network, which is pointed out, it is a secure network for sure. But then again, it is a public Wi-Fi. As a caution, I will always tell you that never use the public Wi-Fi because it can be customized or it can be infused with virus in one or the other way. Because a lot of other people are using that Wi-Fi and you just need to inflict the network in order to corrupt other devices. So just it's a bit, I will say it's a piece of caution that I'll say, if you can avoid it, it is very good because there is a chance which is not there in a private network or uh, if you use a mobile data or any other bit which is a private uh, wi-fi there's no chance that a person can infuse until unless they know your password until unless they know your inscription code until unless they know your network id they cannot infuse upon that particular network so just a word of caution that if you can avoid any public network for your financial uh, uh, credentials or sharing of financial credentials, it is well and good. In that regard, I have a question. So most of the time uh, we get a message or forward that says that take part in spin and all and tell your friends uh, and then you see that you lose money. Can you spot some uh, light on this? Okay. I'll just share with you one uh, information on it. 99.99% of these spin or uh, sharing your forwards and all, 99.99999%, which I'm leaving a very negligible chance that it is a genuine uh, information, genuine reward point, which is there. It's only and only one to reach to more audience. And also, as you mentioned, there are also times when they try to defraud people. There's no chance that based on spinning, based on any other mode which is being done, that you circulate uh, to your friends, they would send you any reward or anything which is there. So never fall for such trap. It's just a hoax uh, yeah, message or hoax uh, mess, um, you know, SMS which is being forwarded. So never fall onto it. So one thing is when you see such kind of messages, and if you, by chance, if you click onto it, just see that what URL you are redirected to. If, you, if it is not a genuine URL of a particular company, just close the browser and do your business what you are getting into. So a lot of internship size uh, sites say that you can earn money by making people sign up. Can these be considered fraud? Okay. So thank you, uh, Shruti, highlighting this. So I will uh, again point out there are two different categories here. There are certain internship which uh, ask you to fill out certain survey and they give out certain rewards out of it. And there are certain um, internship or certain kind of job scam as I pointed out. They will tell you that you need to give out certain information of yours and also pay a certain surety amount in order to get into that particular internship or any other job profile. So never ever I will say that if you are getting into such kind of internship, such kind, such, such kind of job, that you need to share your financial details, which is again, your ATM pin, your CVV, your OTP, your expiry date, and also your entire debit card or credit card detail. Never you have to do that. And if they are not asking all of that, if they are not asking for deposit, then you can surely go ahead and then you can share your bank account number that you can submit this particular uh, reward, which is there to my account. With just your bank account, there cannot be any fraud which is there. They need much more information in order to go forward with it. So I think that will help you out. How safe are the tap and pay option for credit card and uh, many magnetic protective wallet in the market now to safeguard such fraud? Is there a real danger? And what are the safeguard against it? Thank you, Kumod. And uh, I usually get such a question because now there is a tap and pay option which is there. But again, I'll uh, tell you that uh, banks have learned it and all these things that I'm sharing with you, I have pointed out in the tips 
in the next few slides. But again, I'm happy to hear such questions because all of that which I've covered in tips, I'm sharing with you in advance. So uh, tap and pay started coming up from 2015 in India per se, but it was there in uh, other uh, foreign countries way before. So when you talk about tap and pay, again, uh, there is a certain limit which we can set up now. Earlier on, we didn't have that kind of setup which is there. You can surely go on your, uh, uh, let's say, iMobile app or banking mobile application or even your uh, web-based um, internet banking, you will see that now, and there's a RBI circular which come up that you have to give your uh, customer the opportunity that they can set up a limit or they can disable what all features would be accessible or not. And I will personally recommend all of you, we have 34 to 35 students here, that all of you should go and check such uh, options available and you should either retract such kind of option or you can set up a limit how much can it be accessible and for the tap and pay also there are certain limits which are being pointed out that either it could be only 500 rupees 1000 rupees 2000 rupees that you can set up and as you mentioned there is a rdi rdid uh, uh, magnetic protection which comes in the wallet which uh, saves you from such kind of fraudulent activity to happen. And in India also it has started coming up. But one thing I will always and always point out, even with the tap and pay, now when you go forward, there are certain kind of two-factor authentication which is coming up. Uh, ICI, IC, ICI have started it. Some other, uh, uh, I will say banks have also started it that you will just then have to tap and then just press uh, OK on your mobile in order to go forward with a cashless or swipeless uh, transaction which is there. So yes, it is a threat which has started from last five years, I will say there has been number of frauds which has happened to tap and pay. People do roam around with a, a POS device and they will just tap it on your wallet and they'll try to gain access of it. So yes, uh, there are a fraud which has happened, but number of countries have uh, found out how to prevent it. And they're also trying to come out with two-factor authentication for such tap and pay also. Uh, I just want to ask if there's a real, if there, if there real exists IRCTC SBI card. Okay, so I believe you're talking about collaboration, which is there. So again, I'm not sure about this particular card, but yes, there is a collaboration which happens. There's an Amazon Pay ICICI card. But again, if you are uh, going forward with it, I'll always and always point out that you should get it from SBI only. Do not go for any other area where you will say that, okay, they are trying to give you a CTC SBI card. If SBI by themselves are advertising it and they're themselves through their um, uh, mobile app or internet banking they are giving you, then you should go forward with it. But don't go for any collaborative card from a third party itself. It should be bank who should be delivering such kind of um, uh, ATM card or credit card, whatever it is. What about paying off certificates online? For example, this is a registration fee that we will be providing you internship and certificate. So is this also a fraud? Thank you, uh, Kalash, for asking it. So uh, again, we have to see in terms of certain internship and certificate program because a lot of time these are individuals who are providing it and everything. And I will always and always point out that when you go with a, a payment mode with any organization, always go for a registration or an acknowledgement received for it so that you actually know that you have paid for it. But I would point out in such kind of uh, provisions that there are organizations which are just distributing certificates during this lockdown. They come out with webinars, they start distributing it. You yourself have to think that do you want to invest in it pay money and get a, web, uh, a participation certificate or certificate of anything from this particular organization. So again, you have to look for the credibility of the organization. If you surely want to pay for a certificate, you can go forward. I am no one to stop you for doing it. But again, as a, a learned individual, if you want to go forward to pay for a certificate, I will always suggest go for a credible organization who has a value and the value from that certificate would be a value addition for you. So all these 
certificates which ask for a registration fee they are fraud but i will say that you should look for the credibility of the organization and go forward with it um sir other countries like china and us have recently allocated a fund for cyber security and creating cyber army how much is india spending uh, on the same and is the recent enough as recently many report has revealed that china is uh is our biggest threat when it comes to cyber security okay so one thing i will be shortly pointing it out india is currently in a developing stage to set up an entire front in terms of cyber security in terms of coming out with different provisions uh different laws but we don't have a cyber law per se in india we don't have a directed cyber law which is trying to protect the cyber security the law that we have currently in place is information technology act 2000 and um, i am i'm not talking about that because i didn't, I didn't want it to make it more law based but if anybody would be interested to to know about the penalties about hacking identity theft or anybody stealing your data Uh, or anybody accessing your data in one or the other way uh, what is the punishment of access uh, transferring pornography or circulating pornography and all those things that are covered in it act but if we talk about the law per se for cyber security we don't have we have an organization which is cert which is cert which is working for cyber security and all we are starting to develop certain kind of norms and regulation and recently you would have seen that even the ministry of information and technology they came out with certain rules and regulation for ott uh, ott platforms and even whatsapp and messengers uh, all of them have also received notification even twitter have received so government on their own are doing such kind of uh techniques and such kind of practices where they can come out with number of uh, laws and regulation to protect one or the other bit so yes actually that is true so i'll i'll take the questions in a while now just let uh, let me also focus on it because or else we'll uh, directly be going on question answer and i'll make sure i answer all the question posted on the uh, chat box so as i mentioned never share your password never click on any email link which try to portray uh, that it is from a bank uh, again i'll share the uh, ppt with uh, the coordinator and all of you who are interested they can access the ppt uh, always and always go forward and look on to bank notification if you are receiving an information if you are receiving um, a particular email that their kyc has to be renewed always go back and check the official bank notification have they come out with a notification on it here if you will see mummy kya ja rahe mai kal just mute you yeah uh, okay so uh, i have just pointed out one information here uh, there is a city bank urn which is mentioned so if you'll see the two link which i have mentioned here one doesn't have i and the other one is the official link which is there so you have to be very cautious what kind of link you are accessing and again always and always prefer a private wireless network than a public wireless network and continuously read what your uh, bank uh, network is pointing in terms of security update don't go for security update until unless the official uh, i mobile or internet banking is asking for and never access online banking through a url if you get a link that you can access your bank details from a particular link never do that always type the full address and then go forward with the url um i'll just take uh, some of the points in terms of the credit card and debit card fraud that usually happens um there are close to around 6 to 7 types of debit and credit card fraud that usually happen one is loss lost and stolen card a lot of time are um uh, uh, debit and credit card gets stolen and usually this works when you have actually gone to an atm uh, machine you have taken out a uh, certain amount and somebody was shoulder surfing or eaves dropping onto your pin and then he steals your atm card and then access the entire bit so one has to be very careful that if you are going through one or the other atm card there should not be any other bit and i'll share with you certain tips that you should be very cautious about in terms of lost and stolen card if that happens account takeover i think uh, kumud was mentioning some details out of it i'll take that particular bit to tell you so they will take 
uh, your information. It could be your home address, your name, your uh, last few digit, and they will try to take over your account with those information. They will say that okay, they will enter that they want to change the uh, delivery address, they want to change the registered mobile address, and they will take what are the necessary information that are required, and they will enter into your internet mobile banking or any other information that are required, and then. you would not be receiving any ottp otp at that point and the new registered mobile will be getting information so always be cautious about what you share no bank will be asking your details no bank would be asking such thing and even if they are sharing okay do uh, do you want to um, share any kind of uh, you do you want to confirm any kind of address is this your address is this your this you can either cut the call because you don't want to confirm such things and i'll share with you a latest experience of mine and i wanted to see uh, how would it go again i would not call it a fraud but it was kind of deceiving me with misinformation i'll share one experience i got a call from my bank uh, stating that your um, card is about to get expired and actually my card was about to get expired and uh, you uh, need to get a new card and uh, there is an expression card which needs to be sent to your address i'll request all of you to mute yourself okay um so uh, they were asking for uh, that can we send out the expression card and that card would cost you 150 rupees annually with certain gst and all so they tried to confirm my address and everything that this is that so all of that was correct and maybe the person was genuinely from the bank and there were two things that i shared that till now i haven't paid any annual fees for my debit card and i prefer not to pay any annual fee the other thing that he said was so your card will get blocked and you will not be able to access anything i said i am fine i will access to get a new card from my i mobile app and i don't need you to send me out then he said sir your i mobile would also uh, uh, get cut off or you will not be able to access your mobile uh, mobile application also then i was i knew that either he is trying to make a fool out of me or either he is trying to sell me off a upgraded version of a card then i mentioned that there is a policy there is a rbi policy or rbi circular that one month before an expiry of your card the bank themselves will send you the card and everything would be taken care of it i need not pay anything to get my atm card which would be which is about to get expired uh, then he said no sir i'm not saying that you will not get your card but i'm just trying to give out a an upgraded version of a card and i would be happy that if you can take it i said no thank you first of all uh, all of this is if you are genuinely from the icici all of this is getting recorded if not so thank you to try to fool me which you couldn't so thank you and i tried and then i cut the call so these are few things which if you are aware of such kind of things you might be able to um, stop it to happen if you are not then surely these things are probably bound to happen and but i point i would say that if you are doubtful of any scenario of such things never give information never agree upon anything and just cut the call and redirect your query to the genuine icici sbi uh, hdfc or axis bank whichever your bank is counterfeit card cloned card a card which is skimmed or sminned all of that needs to be taken care i'll share with you what actually happens with a counterfeit card they take your information from your card and then they make a duplicate card out of it never receive card there are also n number of uh, techniques when such kind of thing happen in terms of never receive uh, it has been delivered to somebody else and now uh, because they have changed the scenario before uh, i will say few years ago even the atm pin also comes through post and you receive it and at that time this kind of never receive card comes out as a fraudulent technique which is there fraudulent application when such kind of application as kumut was also mentioning that they will try to file a new application sharing that they want to change information and they will fill out all the information which comes out at this point so these are few bit which i'll want to point out in terms of such kind of frauds 
gan always have two factor authentication not just entering cvv and all always have otp or any kind of 3d secure pin which needs to enter uh, for visa and mastercard secure code so that it can authentic authenticate your transaction uh, again uh, now rbi has issued that by 2021 all the debit card all the credit card should be chip based not the magnetic strip based but a chip based so if you do not have a chip based a uh, card i'll request all of you to go to your bank or request your banking official to get you a chip based card or else uh, it is not a secured version of your card uh, try to go to your internet banking or your mobile banking to set up your usage especially international usage because a lot of fraud that happens happens for international transaction you can also set up limit for online transaction domestic transaction another kind of even pay and tap transaction which is there uh, always um register for sms alert for your debit card and credit card transaction so that you are aware of it credit card transaction okay a uh, credit card transaction usually is even more safe because there is a period window which uh, in which if you report that transaction get freeze but for debit card transaction i will always state that go for two factor authentication in terms of having ott otp coming into you and then entering into it never and ever have a transaction where you only enter your cvv and other details not i will uh, on expiry date and all and your uh, transaction is completed always it should take you to a gateway which is secured and again see that it should take you to a gateway which is secured with the http secure thing and it should be the icici sbi access bank hdfc uh, banks gateway and not anything and even paypal has their own gateway so that's one thing that i will point out last thing that i want to point out and then i will uh, again move to the question and answer uh, aspect uh, in terms of atm fraud there are few different type of fraud that happens and i'll share with you a image which i will always tell my students and clients that you should be careful when you are going forward for uh, any kind of atm transaction uh, card skimming and shimming usually this happens where they are trying to counterfeit your card or duplicate your card skimming happens when they get information from the magnetic uh, strip and shimming happens when they are trying to get information from the chip of the particular uh, card uh, in terms of anything eavesdropping a person is trying to get any information out of it from uh, standing behind you or uh, which is again shoulder surfing but they can also get information by placing certain foreign device a camera is there a kind of a spyware which is put up which can take out any information card trapping a lot of time there's a foreign device which is put out that your card would not be able to get out and somebody else would try to help you out and they will replace your card stating that this is your original card and you may not even uh, uh, try to put on more effort seeing that okay the card is mine or the name and etc is mine or so so that's one thing that i will point out always be aware of shoulder surfing is again somebody from behind is trying to see your details a uh, um, keypad jamming or any kind of uh, software attack which is there a lot of time and i will also point out in 2018 uh, sbi they have given out a uh, notice that there were close to 170 atms that were inflicted by some spyware and they blocked card so that one or the other uh compromise of any financial data could not happen you can go and see this uh, uh, news article it was in 2018 when such information was launched so you can get more information out of it keypad jamming a lot of time uh, these fraudsters try to put a pin or something in the keypad that when you enter the pin it won't get entered and somebody standing behind or through a particular camera they will be noticing what exactly you enter and there is a small window before the um, the transaction gets cancelled so the person will say that no 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 it's not working so just take it so you would then want to take out the card and then the person would enter the information and then mint out the money so these are few ways which has which uh, has led to atm card fraud now i have seen uh, and this is the security measures which have been taken by bank the atm card would not come out 
till the entire transaction is finished a number of atm uh, kiosk has started this but still there are some uh, atm which will just like you have to enter the card and you can take it off and then you can go forward and enter the pin so in that particular kiosk the keypad jamming works and you would not be able to enter the keypad and the person would then come back and say that i will help you and they said no it's not working you will then go back and he will try to get the money out of So these are few things that I will point out. So these are ways that I will uh, say that you can be very cautious about. Always and always look. The first point that I'm mentioning, there can be a camera or anything, or this particular section would be little loose. Always touch and check if there is a foreign device which is attached. Even in second where you are entering your card, check that if there is a foreign device or if it is loose or not. that's one thing that i'll point out which will help you understand how to see if there is any bit or so third always see if there is any person standing behind you noticing it is being advised by rbi that in a particular atm there should only be one person accessing it and even the uh, the security guard should also not be uh, looking on your um, uh, key keypad or how you are accessing if there is anything you can hide your by placing hand on your keypad and then entering your pin keypad jamming as i mentioned in terms of the fifth point always see if there is any loose a uh, looseness or any kind of shadiness on your keypad if you can see that it is moving or there is any gaps where in some of the other device is pointed out then just check or you will also know when you are entering the pin it will be visible on your um, particular uh, screen if it is not then do not and always and always cancel the atm transaction even if it's successful even if it's unsuccessful do go forward and cancel your transaction and always and always see if even there is a possibility and this has been detected in ahmedabad that the entire front panel of an atm was a fraudulent front panel it took all the uh, atm card information it took the information of the pin and then the entire card was counterfeited and was misused for next few days so these are few things that you need to be very cautious about in terms of how you can look into such kind of transaction i believe uh, that is it from my end in terms of the information that i would want to give so first i would want to inquire because i always do that and i'll make sure we have around 30 participants and i believe all of you are active uh, actively listening to me or viewing it if there was at least one information that i shared with you which was useful for you you can give a thumbs up in the chat box and uh, then i will start with the q and a session and i will surely go forward and get more information if you think that at least one of the information that i shared was uh, useful for you you can give out any uh, uh, i will say a thumbs up or any kind of um, um, i'll say emoji that you want to point out i'll be happy to hear that by then i'll just see the questions which are there um, after fraud what should a victim do and what is the chance of getting justice uh, amy i will take that question for sure um apple pay is not working in india as it is using biometric authentication not a password pin code statement by upi and by c is it not safe enough surely i will look uh, answer that question also career in cyber security i'm from computer science background surely sachin i will take that question uh, as we know in our country there is no strong cyber fraud or justice okay uh, what what should victim do okay so um okay i can see a number of students pointing out so i'll just take the questions and i will request all those who have further questions uh, you can surely um give uh, point out that question in that particular bit so i'll just uh, take one question each which has been pointed out so first thing is uh, apple pay so again uh, a particular platform based aspect even phone pay and all those things a lot of time based on non compliance they are getting uh, deregulated or they are being taken out of the payment method which is under the payment and settlement act so if that is not there the apple 
as a i will say operating system or as a particular payment mechanism they have to come out with an alternative we as an individual we may not know so it is not that if let's say uh, even phone pay was deregulated google pay was also deregulated for a while it is just that they feel the payments and uh, settlement act and even rbi feels that there are some compliance issue which is happening so if they are not working on that compliance they would be deregulated for the uh, transaction but later on they were uh, given the compliance they went across and did the compliance and they were regulated again so i believe even apple pay might uh, in future they might do it but if not so you cannot access it in india because there are some compliance issue which is there career in uh, cyber security i would say it is the best time to get into it because india is developing in terms of cyber security they are coming out with n number of courses n number of uh, uh, placements again cyber analyst i personally know two to three cyber analysts who are working with different police departments so they hire on contractual basis such kind of cyber security analyst and even there are n number of organization who are dedicatedly working for cyber security and they would have number of position so uh, sachin i would give a uh, thumbs up if you want to get into cyber security and um, um even think about a career in it uh, what should victim do what is the chance of justice uh, thank you amy for highlighting that the um, again i will say that for certain crimes uh, the identification or i will say apprehend apprehending the offender is little tough especially when it is from dark web or uh, different kind of tor networks that they are working in and i will now also share with you because i personally know this one of my colleague was working with bangalore cyber uh, security department or cyber police they were able to track down a drug deal which happened through dark web because they were able to track down certain information so we are making progress in terms of how to track and it is difficult because of the nature of the cyber space but i will surely tell you that we are making progress to track down offender and victim in itself also have a huge um, opportunity to get compensation because if in case we are able to track down the offender you would be able to get compensation also based on retrieving your document or anything else also and if let's say it is based on stalking hacking identity theft there is provisions where the person the victim can claim compensation from the victim compensation fund which is there which is section 357a of crpc so you can go into it you can uh, report the complaint in cyber security if you want i can share the link with the coordinator they can surely do it any kind of cyber crime that happens you can report it even anonymously or with your name itself and the cyber police of your respective jurisdiction they will contact to uh, contact with you at the earliest um we know there is no sab i think i have answered that uh, how can we be aware of key keyboard jamming there are many system in bank okay keyboard jamming a lot of time people who are doing it they comes with helmet and all and uh, they are masked so they can at times they do such kind of thing where they are putting it out or a number of time there has been a study which was been done that number of time there isn't either cctv in the atm kiosk or the cctv is not working at all so that is one of the way how people are looking forward in terms of uh, accessing such kind of uh, fraud or accessing such kind of uh, activity so i believe i tried to answer um most of the question i think there's one last question i believe again if there are any other question i'll be happy you can pop in or i'll just take this question by vidhi and then i will hand it over to shruti for any uh, uh, valedictory aspect or how do you know if my device is being tapped okay uh, this is a very common question that i <coughs> hear out from um, number of students especially people who uh, access digital uh, media a lot so one thing i'm not sure how many of you would have done this or how many of you would have been aware of it especially if i talk about mobile you can also do it from your laptop or any other device that you are there go forward and check the permission uh, aspects of your device which all application has a permission can you see a third party software which is there which is asking for your camera permission or which has been granted camera microphone storage if and i think latest version of android and even apple 
have a particular um i will say opportunity that you can deny certain permission which you do not want to give and always and always make sure that until it is required do not give permission to for camera microphone storage location to any other software even there is a possibility that you can deny it for uber and all and you can type your location manually so uber not always require your uh, microphone your um, location your camera and all so you don't do not even for uber also you shouldn't give it always and always then if let's say you have downloaded a particular application from uh, play store because even there are n number of dubious application which is under which you thought was a genuine application so always and always check for the trustworthy source which is there which is the parent company because a lot of time let's say i'm just giving a hypothetical example uber will have certain subsidiary application like uber eats uber something something uber rental etc maybe they have a, a separate application see which is the parent company if it is not the genuine because never ever a dubious application will try to give out a parent company because they will not receive a payment if they will give a dubious um, company name or so so you should be very careful about that which is the parent company and then you should see if the parent company is genuine or not so these are few things how you can see if some other application is assessing your information if they are then you can see that okay information is being given to them or so so this is one way how you can look into it so can you uh, brief us about dark web what it is and impact on life okay uh, again i'll just give you a brief about it because dark web and tor network is entirely a different uh, ball game and i might go on and take 15 20 minutes of yours to explain it maybe if um, the alumni network team believe that i uh, can come again whenever it is feasible for both of us i might take again one uh, webinar on that but just as a brief i'll tell you when you talk about dark network or dark web or tor network it is usually an anonymous or in terms of uh, any kind of identity which comes onto it is taken off from the entire network which means that when you go to such kind of dark web or dark net or tor network your identity even of your ip address or any other network is not revealed because it is being scrutinized in such a way that your access is reflected as somebody accessing it so there is one or the other uh, i will say a uh, hit which is being pointed it is called hit but when you access a particular network through the uh, dark web it is reflected as mr a mr a would be then reflected as mr b so there is a anonymity which comes into it so tracking down that particular individual is very difficult at that particular bit so a lot of illegal transaction uh, when we talk about uh, drug deal or any other kind of a thing happens in such kind of network and i would personally say if you do not have any business in such kind of network do not go and access it because there can also be a chance that when you go and log into such kind of website there can be an infusion of spyware or malware into your system so if you do not have a business uh, strongly not recommended to go there particular bit so when we download some software torrent then after some time the chrome shows that this managed by your organization what is this type of fraud um when we download some software then after some time the chrome shows this is managed by your organization okay 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 uh, i believe i have understood it correctly if not then i will be happy to hear again uh, in the follow up question so when you go and try to access a website or any kind of downloading which you want to go forward a particular url based on your organization because your organization is also working on in order to prevent any kind of malware or any kind of cyber attack or cyber uh, crime which can happen to their network so a lot of times certain urls certain websites are blocked uh, uh, on your uh, particular um, maybe your uh, let's say shivaji college network or op jindal network so you may not be able to access it with that network you can then access it some from some other mode so because they have their own setup which is there which means that they have blocked the network they have either disabled it so you cannot access so i'll just share with you one thing i'm not aware of the torrent thing 
majorly all the educational network if you are accessing a wifi of your college you may not be able to access any pornographic site why because they block it they don't want the students to access it so that's one thing and there can be n number of other illegal websites also so what they do is they put it all the names of or they also put certain keywords if you are trying to search certain keywords it will show that it is not uh, it's not allowed you cannot view the results and all because it is blocked by your uh, uh, wireless network so it's not a fraud it is a security measure which your organization is taking so that there will not be any cyber attack which comes into picture so i think that is it i don't see any other question i would be happy to hand it over to shruti and i believe um, we were able to take a lot of question and answer a lot of question and i believe it was useful for all the students uh, present here and um, i could also see urvashi ma'am here um, i'm happy to see her uh, and um, i was um, i'm happy that she taught me and she is being uh, part of my webinar so happy to see you ma'am so over to you shruti yeah i'm equally happy yes. and very urvashi. very happy to uh, be a part of your webinar and i i'm sure it's, it's been very informative and i got to know so many new things and uh, we are looking forward to having you at the alumni meet as well Charlie, it was a wonderful Charlie. session actually thank you ma wonderful thank session you. thank you so it was really very informative and very engaging we are really very thankful for you for taking your time out and guiding us it was really very insightful thank you so much